<laughs> What's up world, it's your boss, International Zoe. And today's topic is dating overseas realistic or only for a chosen few? I don't know if I, I worded or framed that right, but I hope y'all follow me. I just today started thinking, thinking about myself, starting with myself. I've been traveling pretty much consistently for the last four years. If you want to minus the short period of um, the lockdown was about three, three to four months. But besides that, I've been traveling consistently for the last four years, pretty much monthly, one or two countries each month, or I'll stay in one country for a month. And that's been going on for four years. Um, first, I would say, yes, I feel blessed and fortunate to be able to do that. I want to do it. My desire is to do it. Uh, the YouTube just came as it just made sense. If I'm going to be traveling around the world, uh, having all these experiences, it would just made sense to share it. And through YouTube, yes, I'm able to make some of my money back, but um, not to the point where it covers everything. Not my lifestyle. And sticking on the topic of me being fortunate to be able to do it, let me say why I'm able to do it. I was able to do it, one, because uh, me and my ex-wife broke up. So when we decided that our relationship was over, that the marriage was over, I was then able to travel and do what I wanted to do. Um, my children were also young adults. So they were at the point where, you know, they needed some supervision, but it was nothing like leaving children home alone or anything like that. Um, my son by then I think was in his early 20s. He was like 20 years old. My daughter was 18 at the time and she was in college at the time. So I had time. <clears throat> I had options. And financially, I have my businesses here in, in New York City. So I was um, financially able to do it, to travel. And because I had my businesses that I didn't, I no longer had to work in each day, I had time. I had the time, I had the resources, and let's just say the lifestyle, okay? Now, that is not the norm. Even if I just look at my friends and family, most of them are married or in a relationship. Some have young kids and some have young adults. Every... I know people who travel, you know, but it's usually like, but like before I started traveling this way, it was mostly family trips. So the expenses are larger when you're, you know, traveling with your family, even if you're only traveling with your spouse or significant other, the expense is a little different. It's two flights, it's more food, it's everything. So I still consider myself very fortunate to be able to do that. And also being an entrepreneur and having my own business, I was able to allocate time as I chose. Now, the average person may work uh, a labor intense job or blue or white collar. I know friends who make much more money than me, but they don't have the time. They have to report to work. They have responsibilities at their job. Yes, they get time off. They get vacations. But, you know, that might allow them to travel maybe four times a year. They couldn't usually travel for a month. 
it'll be two weeks it's, you know so there's a lot of responsibility that comes with being able to travel full time now you look at other maybe travelers let's say when I'm out there traveling I meet I think the number one uh, person that I meet when I'm traveling is retired military they're special type of uh, people because one they've had plenty of experience in traveling from being in the military those who they're able to retire from the military at an early age and get it, receive a pension uh, and they're the guys that I think are out there more than anyone else the new thing is a uh, digital nomad people working online also you have um, people that are content creators let's say for instance two people that inspired me Marwar and Ace he was Ace Live then I think I don't know if he's I think he's just Ace now those are two guys I watched that inspired me tremendously now those two guys are both much younger than me they're single they have no children um, and to my knowledge, they don't have like a home or a mortgage or anything like that. And they are able to do YouTube full time. And there is definitely a benefit to able to really do it full time. So they they have they've uh, gained the resources. They have the time and they have the lifestyle. Other people their age may still may be uh, working, whether you're working doesn't matter what your work is if you're working in a job then you have uh, rules and regulations that you have to abide by you have a boss you have a manager you have to uh, notify them when you want to take your vacation you have to come back at a certain time so you just don't have the lifestyle that's one thing then you also may not have the money the resources and then lastly, you may not have the time. The, uh, the other travelers I see are people who travel with their vacation. Even if, th if those guys who travel and use as much as their vacation as possible, sick leave and vacation uh, coupled together to travel for a longer period of time. So they don't have the lifestyle. They may have the resources and they kind of don't have the time so when people say the big thing is dating in America is done and that's one component and I don't disagree with the super challenges of the culture in America and dating for men but I think everybody subscribes to the fact that dating in America is difficult whether you'd say it's over whether you say you know you you're just checking out from it there's most people are not able to realistically go somewhere else and have a real relationship and I've been traveling for four years I've met many people I've met beautiful women but realistically, most of them are too young for me, per se. Um, most of them don't have a lot to offer. Um, and then you're not going to, just because you meet more people doesn't mean you're going to really connect with people. So you still have the challenge, challenge of finding someone that you like and that likes you as much or more that you both connect with. And you feel a real urge to make something serious of it. That's the other challenge. Just because you are able to travel, you have the resources, you have the time, you have the lifestyle to travel. Still, you have another component is finding someone to have a meaning relationship with. And that still happens no matter where you are, no matter if. The personality of the women in those countries are different if they're more agreeable if what you're looking for is uh, more of a uh, 
what do you call it, um, uh, traditional, that's the word they use, right? More, more traditional type of, of female. Still doesn't mean you're going to connect with them. Still doesn't mean you have to see if you can trust them. If you, you know, it, it, there's still a lot of elements that go into a relationship. So I'm only saying this to say that while I see a lot of people subscribe to the I'm going overseas to find my woman, I'm just being more realistic about it. Someone who has been traveling for four years, it's still the same. Well, there's still a hurdle of meeting someone of value that you really connect with and that is interested in you as much as you are interested in them. You're still going to have that challenge. You know, it doesn't matter whether she's traditional and she's agreeable. You still have to connect. You know, I've definitely met with some women that wanted to take it further with me, but they didn't really meet the things that I was looking for. You know, so, and then that's only because I've been able to live this lifestyle. Now, I don't know if I could live this lifestyle forever. Um, I would love to have the option to do it. But don't get me wrong, traveling around the world is expensive. Um, not only that, it's time consuming. You could get drained. You could meet a whole bunch of people and still kind of be a somewhat lonely. So I know people sit at home and they watch these videos and they watch these content creators traveling around the world. Um, and they like, yo, that's what I want to do. I just want to be the voice of reason and let you guys know that it's not all chopped up to what it appears to be from your vantage point of sitting home. No, we are, you know, I try to keep it as, as, as real as possible, but we are feeding you guys the best parts of traveling around the world. We're not focusing on the uh, pitfalls and the errors and the uh, mishaps. You know, so still would I like to be doing what I'm doing? Yes. But I think realistically, and, and let's just say this, okay? Even if I were to choose a woman, find what I'm looking for, then I would have to say, wow, well, do I have the means to bring her with me on these journeys that I still want to do? Or is she going to stay over there and I'm going to come back and see her when I can? Or am I going to stop traveling to be with her? You know, so I think people are underestimating all that it takes. Those people who are able to say, I'm going to go to this country, I'm going to live in this country, and I'm going to find a woman in this country... That might simplify some of the hurdles that you got to get over to to make, um, you know, overseas dating worth it or finding a wife in another country. But let's just be honest that there's a whole other challenge to dating and finding someone overseas. Could be the language, could be the culture could be the age you know i will also say that in some of these countries women my age would not necessarily appeal to me i would say women in america my age would not necessarily appeal to me unless they took care of themselves very well and to be honest no one ages better than african people whether you want to say African American people from the in the sport diaspora, African diaspora, in my opinion, physically, you know, no one ages better than we do. So, you know, I, that's not a shot at anybody else. Um, one other place I saw people aging pretty well when I was in, I must say, in Thailand. Um, women that appear to be in their early 20s or in their late 20s or early 30s so yeah 
I look good for my age. Could I be in better shape? Yes. But physically, on the outside, I look pretty good for my age. I don't look 50. You know, so um, I just wanted to put that out there. So don't be uh, jealous. Uh, if you are, not saying you are of uh, guys traveling around the world and what, what, what appears to be to you as the best life ever, it's not necessarily the case. And I just want to give y'all a shot of reality. Um, I'm not with the captain. And, you know, I take uh, a couple of hits every now and then because people don't know how to disagree and use your words and I'm just gonna say that when you comment you I don't have any problem with someone disagreeing with part of what I said with all of what I said not liking me not liking my stance not liking my ch I don't have any problem with that and I don't have any problem with you expressing it but I do have a problem with you being disrespectful we can agree and disagree. And I think, I don't know if it's because people are lazy or I don't know if they feel it's okay to be disrespectful because they're behind a, a username. But keep in mind that you can express yourself and you should exp express yourself without being disrespectful. When I, when I say disrespectful, I mean without trying to say things like, oh, that sounds feminine. Or, oh, that's, he's a simp. Or, oh, he's corny. Or, or, you know, like, it's cool to disagree. It's cool to share uh, your point of view. But let's keep it respectful. That's all I ask. Keep it respectful. And if you're not respectful, you're going to waste your time because I'm just going to delete your comment. International Zone, Barber World TV. Love is love, life is life, and loyalty is priceless. Peace. Subscribe, snitches!